We have to return to a, a subject that I, I, I go to only reluctantly. A few thoughts tonight on President Obama, who's wrapped up his Asian and Middle East trip and is now on his way home. But as is often the case with this president, acting and sounding presidential isn't much of a burden for him, even when he travels abroad. Here's our president in India, and it's clear he believes he's fascinating wherever he happens to be. Even as America has blessed us with extraordinary opportunities, there were moments in my life where I've been treated differently because of the color of my skin. There have been times where my faith's been questioned by people who don't know me. Or they've said I adhere to a different religion, as if that were somehow a bad thing. To some, the president's narrative is a bit of a stunner. Instead of a nation that elected its first African-American president, the Obama narrative would suggest that he is both the architect, the critic, and arbiter of our nation's enlightenment and evolution and social advancement, which, of course, he leads, and of which he just happens to be arguably the principal beneficiary. But nothing breathtaking here. It's just who he is, folks. During a trip to Kuala Lumpur last year, President Obama took it upon himself to equate Malaysia and the United States in their history, their culture, their heritage, and their commitments to freedom and individual liberty also helpfully declaring both nations with work to do when it comes to human rights, ignoring any concerns that such equivalency and distortion of history might be misinterpreted by the Malaysians as pandering at best and condescension at worst. Our president, who's never acknowledged a personal misjudgment or mistake of his own, doesn't hesitate to critique America and Americans while in France, Turkey, and Egypt, or wherever he travels. President Obama once informed the entire United Nations that it is true the United States has at times failed to live up to our ideals. Imagine. Mr. Obama is often oblivious to the obvious and serenely unaware of the self-evident. As he eagerly takes America's measure in public, and never his own. I truly wonder if he finds himself as wanting as he does the nation he represents and to which he owes so much. Surely not.